because it's fun. And, and what I think is neat too about some of these parks like this is that, as Kelly mentioned, it was a resort at one time. Mm -hmm. People flocked to these springs from all over the country and even the world to come because there was one. All, people also thought they had medicinal purpose, you know, mm -hmm. uh, benefits these springs. And as Kelly mentioned, everybody was looking for the Fountain of Youth. And so I always <laughs> think the history associated with these parks is pretty fascinating as well. But that's a great park. And then the thing that's great, as, you, as Kelly's going to mention, is there's some other parks close by that you can either make a day trip of this mm -hmm. or even a, a whole weekend and really have a great time. Yeah, and I definitely want to point out that you can go to these springs all year round. And they offer different things, like Jimmy said, throughout the year. And in the winter, especially if you go back uh, about January, you will see tons of manatees that flock there and stay the winter in the springs because like we said, the water stays 72 degrees year round, which when it gets really cold like it did last winter, they were just all flocking to the spring. So in the summer, you can go to cool off and in the winter, you can be cold, but watch the manatees stay warm. So it's definitely a, a year long process that you can enjoy the springs. Yeah, absolutely. Now, what are some of the other springs that are close by? Because I know very close by to Daly yeah. there's two other great parks. A stone's throw away, you can go to Blue Springs Park or Hontoon Island uh, State Park. And Blue Springs Park is another beautiful springs, and it's more natural. So when you hop into the springs, there's trees and everything around you. There's nothing been cemented in. And so it's kind of a different experience than the previous two that we talked about. Um, it's really natural, and you just kind of gently flow down the spring. It's really gorgeous there. One thing I really like about Blue Springs, which is I believe the largest spring on the St. Johns, mm -hmm. um, is that you do have this, it's really a natural um, setting. Mm -hmm. You have the spring head where the water bubbles up out of the ground, and then you have this great boardwalk that follows the spring run, which is the little, connect, the little uh, um, stream mm -hmm. that flows from the spring and then flows out into the St. Johns, and the boardwalk alone is just fun to walk along and they have some observation decks that come out over the spring. Um, so during the winter time, for instance, when a lot when people aren't swimming because the manatees are there, it's a great place to go, as you mentioned, to view the manatees, um, which oh, are just yes. everywhere. It's and a you're parking right lot for manatees. At, yeah, it is, absolutely. <laughs> it really is, yeah. It's that boardwalk, they did such a good job with it and there's little pit stops along the way and they have a, a museum house there too. and snorkel and paddling and they have boat tours through there too which are really fabulous i definitely recommend them um, and it's you can even stay there they have great camping facilities it's on my to-do list so it should be on yours too right and cabins that's the one thing mm -hmm. that's what's really neat too is if you go down and you you make your reservations far enough in advance and can actually get a cabin because i know there's <laughs> a lot of demand you can stay at blue springs stay in an air-conditioned cabin <laughs> and <laughs> You can go swimming at Blue Springs, go over to De Leon Springs, take a little eco tour. And then, and also at Blue Springs, they have a little um, uh, museum, an old house, the mm -hmm. Thursby House, which was built in the 1800s. And they have some historical displays inside that house as well. Mm -hmm. So there's all kinds of things to do at those two uh, parks. Mm -hmm. Then you can also, if you're gonna be there for the weekend, you can head over to Hontoon Island State Park, which is a a, a unique experience in itself also. Yeah, I love that park because you have to take a little tiny ferry to get to it. Or if you own a boat, you can actually dock up. They have dock, uh, boat slips there. So either way of getting there, but you have to go by boat and it's it's a really unique experience. And that's what I love about all of these parks is they're, o they're so different in their own way. Um, but Hantun Island is, is just really unique. They have a really great museum there that's so informative and very well done. It's very small, but it, it packs a lot for its punch, so it's got a lot of good information in there. Yeah, Han Toon's always been one of my favorites because, as Kelly mentioned, you have to take a small, um, it's actually a, um, a battery-powered, solar-powered um, little ferry that mm -hmm. takes you across to the island, and then while you're there, there's great hiking trails that go, and um, f the, the canoeing and kayaking around that area is just phenomenal you can go up into the Hontoon Dead River and I've and that that is just some of the best canoeing and kayaking on the St. Johns which is great too. Yeah if you've only experienced the St. Johns River here in Northeast Florida you definitely have to head down there it's a whole other animal in that area it's it's very small and quaint and you, there's a lot more natural shoreline so you really get quite a different experience than you do up in Jacksonville. Well one thing I want to mention now I don't want people to get the impression that they can get this guidebook and they're going to get all of these parks in it. This guide, as I mentioned before, is Palatka to the Atlantic Ocean. Mm -hmm. So it does not include some of the parks we're talking about today. 
that's going to be in guidebook two, which <laughs> Kelly's really trying to encourage me to start on as soon as possible. <laughs> but um, those parts we wanted to mention because the springs give you an opportunity during the summer to really enjoy the river and stay cool, of course, at the same mm -hmm. time. We have some springs also that are also in the watershed, not in that area, but over near the Oklawaha. And we talked about Silver mm -hmm. Springs, which is a famous spring, obviously. Now, you can't swim there, but you can actually paddle up into the Silver River mm -hmm. and kayaking, canoeing, and there's actually boating up in that area, too. But that is an unbelievable place to go as well. It sure is. And if you haven't read Bill Belville's book, River of Lakes, one of my favorite facts from his book is that there's actually a population of rhesus monkeys up in Silver River. You have to kind of paddle up there, but they were brought by a, a tour captain who was trying to create a jungle experience for visitors. And he thought he would just leave the monkeys there on an island and they would stay. And of course, monkeys can swim and they have a mind of their own. So they're still there to this day. And so that's definitely a to-do list for people if you're interested in experiencing the old-time jungle feel. That's right, and that's in Silver River State Park. There's this park there that you can access Silver River. Um, put mm -hmm. You can put in a canoe or kayak or rent one. They have a little small museum there as well that have a lot of prehistoric artifacts that have been found actually in the bottom of the springs. Um, so there's, there's all kinds of great ways to get out and experience the river. One thing we encourage you to do too is while you're there to obviously enjoy these areas responsibly. Unfortunately, our springs are also um, heavily polluted in some cases. We're seeing reduced flow of springs because we're pumping too much water out of the ground. Um, and we're also seeing a lot of the water is polluted from nutrients, as we talked about before, from runoff and from um, uh, these nutrients getting down into the groundwater as well. Mm -hmm. So it's really unfortunate, but what we're here to d say today is get out, enjoy and explore the river, Get to know it, and then of course you're going to have to take some responsibility after that to get involved with Riverkeeper or with some other organization to help protect the river. Um, and that's the bottom line, I think, in all of this is mm -hmm. let's enjoy it responsibly. But then we also, with ownership, which we own all of these parks, we own the river as um, the public owns them, with ownership comes responsibility, and we all have to take responsibility for our own individual actions. On our website, I will mention that there's more information about parks. We do have a river um, access and recreation section on the, on the website that lists a lot of the parks. It also lists camping opportunities and marinas, um, hotels and restaurants also mm -hmm. that you can access along the river. And it also, uh, we have a lot of information about what you can do as an individual to help as well. And I encourage people to go there and do that. And if you're inclined, we also hope that you'll join. And of course, you can join on our website as well. So, um, Kelly, anything you want to say as we're parting here to talk about uh, how people can get this guidebook? And well, I just hope everybody enjoys their summer and enjoys the river as part of their summer experience and, and uses our website to gain some more knowledge and insight into the St. John's River and hopefully Riverkeeper. And hopefully you can get more involved with us as well. Well, and Kelly, so just so you'll know also, is Kelly, as our outreach director, she is, coordinates volunteers. So if you're interested in volunteering, you can look Kelly up on our website. We have um, a page that lists all of our staff and has our emails on, the, on that page. So get, send Kelly an email or call us at the office, and Kelly will definitely get you involved. Believe me, we have <laughs> lots of opportunities. Um, and real quick, Kelly, we have 30 seconds, but there's two boat trips coming up, too. Oh, yes. August 14th, two-hour boat trip going up the Ortega River, $15 for adults, $5 for children, um, and it's two hours. And then August 20th is a sunset tour for adults only. So that's August 20th, and that's a Friday night, 630. So check our website and uh, get involved with Riverkeeper. Thank you for joining us. Nonprofit advocacy group in St. John's River. And our mission is to help protect the river.